what's going on? My name is Brandon. Welcome back to Save Station, the gaming portion on the Geek XP. So in case you guys missed it, E3 was this past week. It was a lot of exciting, a lot of cool reveals. All three of our major software, uh, hardware uh, producers, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, showed off a lot of exciting new uh, games coming out. We had the reveal of the Xbox One X, which is interesting, but I have some mixed feelings. But there was one thing in particular that I wanted to address today that came out during the convention and it feels sort of like an unspoken understanding amongst gamer gaming consumers. And But I feel like it's interesting that we keep on seeing the same scenario play out year after year at conventions like E3. So this is going to be a little bit of a rant, so if you guys aren't in for that, that's fine. It's not super organized, I've just had these thoughts and opinions and feelings about this thing that was announced. And I just sort of wanted to get it out there, put it out for people to uh, interact with and let me know what you guys think. So this is my rant about Bioware's new game coming out called Anthem. On the whole, I love the way it looks. It looks super cool. In terms of the premise of the game and what I saw, it looks really cool. An open world sci-fi game where you have customizable mech suits and you go off on missions and you fight monsters and you get loot and it looks super awesome. And it looks like they're combining a little bit of the combat mechanics of Mass Effect with a new world to play in. And it's really, really exciting. I love a lot of Bioware's games. Mass Effect is awesome. Dragon Age is amazing. It's one of my favorite franchises ever. So I'm super excited to see them start a new franchise. However, however, what I don't like and what I'm actually surprised that this is something that Bioware has done is when they reveal these gameplay reveal trailers and it's so obviously a pre-rendered super high quality, not what the actual game is going to look like gameplay. We've seen it so many times with previous games and the ones that come to mind where this has been something that people have noticed are huge downgrades in titles like Watch Dogs, Tom Clancy's The Division, Rainbow Six uh, Siege, each of those were released and those are all Ubisoft games and Ubisoft has an interesting way that they have handled some of their releases in the past and maybe it's more indicative of them but I feel like this is something that can be addressed to the video game world at large. Especially for me, I know when I saw the Watch Dogs trailer at E3, I don't remember what year it was, it was super exciting, it was gorgeous, the new consoles were on the verge of coming out so we were all super excited to see what this new hardware was going to be able to do and they showed off amazing lighting effects, dynamic weather, volumetric lighting, you know, reactive like cloth sim on your character's outfit, this immersive world that felt like you could interact with at will but would still can persist and continue to exist outside of your character and you were just sort of in this sandbox that you could play in. The Division was the same way, it felt mu very much like this very full, very dynamic world that really existed that your characters were in and you were able to explore and interact with and affect and that it was there for your character to change or just respond to it however you wanted to play. Uh, they have like things where they would show like some part of the world shows up and the players, the, the, the players, they always have these like voiceover people who are supposed to pretend to be like actual players and they all get along really well and they cooperate and they come in and out of the game and all that sort of stuff. But it's not really, that's, everyone's sort of like, that's an interesting fantasy of how multiplayer games work. With Anthem's gameplay trailer, one, it looks gorgeous, and I am totally un understand why developers, when they show a gameplay reveal, if they up the graphics for that reveal. I'm totally fine with that if they're running it, but as long as the gameplay is, and the world, and the, the game itself is pretty indicative of what we're going to have in the final product. The game being a little bit prettier, I understand. It's a presentation, you are marketing, you want people to be impressed, especially after you've announced a new console. You want people to be excited about the technological applications for what games are going to look like in the future. However, it gets to a certain point where you're almost promising something that people know they can't have for the sake of pre-orders. And I have stopped pre-ordering games outside of franchises that I'm deeply invested in. I've stopped pre-ordering games because of weird chicanery like this. In the Anthem gameplay trailer, we see this character in this like little hub world. I imagine it'll work very similarly to uh, The Last City in Destiny, where you have this small hub world with some merchants and NPCs and maybe some like guild folk that you go into and you upgrade your mech 
suits and do all that sort of stuff and then you go out into this open world. We'll see what that means. Open world is a term that video game developers have been using for a couple years now uh, for varying degrees of how that actually interacts with the, the player in the world. We see them get into their suit, they're talking to their friends, and they go out on this mission. Um, and once they get into the actual gameplay part of it, in terms of aesthetics, they have beautiful volumetric lighting, particle effects in the air that sort of mix in and make it look like there's dust or smoke or mist. And then there's, you know, all these all this foliage and fabric that's actively moving around in this, they have this bazaar that's full of high definition, you know, high fidelity characters that are interacting with. And these are all the same hallmarks of all these other previous gameplay reveals where you show this dynamic, cool looking world that's full of NPCs. And then when the final thing comes out, you know, things like the audio. I remember when you look at the original reveal for the first Watch Dogs versus what actually comes out, a big part of the difference if you watch those side by side is the audio. In the initial reveal, it looks like there's, you know, all these people are talking, there's these new news broadcasts, it sounds like the city is alive, and then in the final game, that stuff sort of, that is the fat that gets cut for your release, because these consoles, the hardware is inherently limited. You can only have it rendering so much in real time, not to mention when your game is also having to interact with online servers, and I'm not a super tech-heavy guy, so maybe I'm totally off base with getting into some of this stuff, but, you know, the consoles are limited, there's only so much they can do, and the immersive elements like super dynamic weather, lighting, audio, the stuff that makes the world feel as immersive as they're selling it to be, that part stuff usually gets cut away. So the character, uh, our player character gets into their suit, we have this cool like, looks like a pre-rendered cutscene that would be even pre-rendered in game, and they meet up with their friend and they go off and they, they go off for a quest. So they're going off and, you know, exploring and you see all this wildlife and the world looks really interesting and they come across this giant monster and it bursts out of the trees and it's attacking this thing and they're like, whoa, you know, we don't want to use up any of our supplies on this, let's go on to our quest. I think that puts an interesting implication for limited supplies when you go out to quest that like, in terms of ammunition and weaponry that those are going to be very limited resources and I kind of like that and I wish they had talked about that more instead of just trying to wow people with this immersive world with visuals that aren't really a realistic expectation for us to have for our games right now. And so they show this thing and it's like, the world is dynamic and is responding to on its own and you interact with it as you want. And I'm just like, that looks like an event where like in Destiny, when you show it in a trailer, it looks super dynamic and it looks super random and that it could happen at any time. But I feel like an encounter like that with a monster like that is either quest specific or it happens once early in game to wild players, and then it's a pre-scripted thing that you can almost predict when it's gonna happen every other time. Or it never happens again. The the scar ambush that they have where they go, um, the, there's this distress the beacon and all these enemies come out. That feels, again, like one of those things where you go into a zone and that thing is like, it runs and happens like every 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, because they create these cool curated moments but they want people to be able to experience them regularly. They want to make sure that as new players are coming in, they're having a similar experience. And that's fine. If you want to do that, that's cool. But I don't like them selling it as a dynamic, real-time world that is responding to the player's actions. The game, in terms of exploration and exploring the world, looks like it's going to be instanced, where maybe you can interact with other players, sort of like in Destiny, which is another game that promised more than it gave in a lot of respects. I think we all always expect like a visual downgrade just because when they're presenting it, they want it to look good, that's fine. But in terms of its content, Destiny is another one that is infamous for promising something that it delivered in no way, except for partially delivered on it years later after like four DLCs, where you'll have like a hub world where people can interact. And then once you leave that hub world, it's instanced. And it looks like that's how this is going to work. Later they show off this, uh, it's 
it's called like a Shaper Storm event that occurs. And we don't really know what that means for players. It says like fly into the Shaper Storm. And we don't know what that means. And that's cool. But these players are just for like, are free to like come in. I would be interested to see if that's actually how it works out or if it's gonna have to be like some lobby where you group up only in the hub world and then you load as you guys like, maybe it'll be like a loading screen as you are going through like an elevator. Sort of in this gameplay trailer, we see our main player that we're sort of following around. She gets in her ranger mech and then she's in this elevator. Maybe have some loading screen like that. It gets you onto the bay with the rest of your party and you or your squad and then you leave. Sort of like how in Destiny, you group up on in the city and then you have a loading screen where your ships are all out in space and then you're in an instanced version of the world out there. I foresee that's going to that's going to be how it works. Most games in terms of processing speed and power and stuff, it's really difficult and then with internet from different players, a lot of people have tried doing games where you can just sort of like jump into someone's instance world and jump out. Uh, the division was talking about doing stuff like that and it's cool, but it hasn't really been implemented the way that it's presented, and so I am nervous about that. Overall, my feelings on this are, as you can probably tell, mixed, because while the world and the game looks exciting, like the, the whole concept of it is really intriguing. I want to play this game and I want to see what it's like. I am very skeptical, and I think you guys should be too. I think it's interesting because if they had just shown like a really pretty rendered cinematic introducing us to this world, the basic concept and ideas of the game, maybe using a camera position that sort of shows like, oh, this is sort of like what your gameplay camera position would look like, to give people a feel of what it might be like playing this game, interacting with this world. Because that's what they're selling when they do these really, you know, curated, pre-rendered gameplay trailers, is they're trying to give a sense of what it will be like to play this game, and selling the world and how dynamic it is for the players to interact with. But there are other ways you can do that without fibbing to the world that this is what gameplay is exactly going to be like. Because when you have this, this bit of text here that says, this footage you're about to see is captured in-game in real time. You're putting a connotation of, while it's sort of en masse understood that this is not what the final product is going to look like, it still feels inherently deceptive. And I don't like that. And I don't know why Bioware is doing that. I feel like they have a strong following. I know Andromeda was a bit of a sort of hiccup, but you have a big fan base. You have people who are, will pre-order your games anyway. Why do you have, feel like you have to make this sort of cloak and dagger, deceptive, you know, magician, man behind the curtain showing? Do you presume to criticize the great Oz? You ungrateful creatures think yourselves lucky that I'm giving you audience tomorrow instead of 20 years from now. Oh. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain! Telling people this is what the final gameplay is going to look like when we all sort of know that's not true. Beyond Good and Evil 2 had this awesome cinematic reveal and the world looks super interesting. I never even got to play the first Beyond Good and Evil, but just from that cinematic, which was beautiful, but didn't give any inclination to gameplay, I am invested in that world and in that story because of how they presented it in a cinematic. They didn't have to show me some like what this is gonna this is gonna be what gameplay is gonna look like, because that's not what they were going for. They're getting people to be invested in the world and the story and the characters, and I feel like that's what these over-the-top curated gameplay trailers are for, for the most part. They're trying to get people invested in engaging in a dynamic, reacting world that they can play in but they're presenting it in such a way that it can't be delivered upon, at least not right now. We've done this so many times, and I feel like we're what people are catching on, but to me, my advice is don't pre-order. This whole, the way they've done this, you know, I feel like it's just a ploy for pre-orders because it's guaranteed money in their pocket without, and we're purchasing things without knowing how good they are. I would say, wait for release, look for reviews, be, be on the lookout for pre-release reviews, but be skeptical of them, and wait to form your own opinions. Wait for the game to be released, see what your peers and other gaming journals might say about the game, be skeptical of those that might be getting some money behind uh, the curtain for positive reviews. A lot of uh, game developers will sometimes 
cherry pick who they give titles to based on maybe previous reviews they've given to them. If someone is generally positive for most of their games, they will give them a pre-release copy to do a review on, and they will probably give it another positive review. But wait a little bit. It's okay to wait because generally there's sometimes like a new deal or a new version that comes out with some extra stuff in it. It's okay to wait for a little bit because your money is what they want. And if you are a smart consumer and you don't let them get away with showing off something that isn't representative of what the final product will look like, they will learn and respond to that. I would have been fine if they just said this was rendered in engine, but isn't because they've been labeling it as gameplay and that's to me that's where this becomes shady and iffy is you're showing it off as gameplay when it's just in engine in-game engine pre-rendered on super powerful pcs and processors like this is not what this is going to look like on a console hardware you're working with a console, you're working with limited hardware that is affordable for mass consumption. That thing is not gonna be able to run this super high fat. I mean, I'm sure it will be 4K, I'm sure it'll be 60 frames per second, I'm sure it will be beautiful, and the game overall, it'll probably be awesome. It'll probably be really cool. But I don't like it being presented that it's gonna be this, because if you look at previous titles that have done stuff like this, again, The Division, Rainbow Six Siege, Watch Dogs, I'm sure there are others. And who, know, who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're, it's gonna be awesome. The Xbox One X will blow everyone away and will show exactly what it showed here and I'll look like an asshole. But I'll be a happy asshole because then Anthem will be awesome. I would just advise caution and prudence with your wallet. Let these game developers know that we are an informed consumer base, that we can't be just done in by these sort of tricks, that we want quality games, not just big promises. That's most of my thoughts. I'm sure I forgot something that I wanted to say, but I'm sure you guys have your own thoughts and opinions on Anthem and the way some of these games are presented over the convention. Let me know which games you guys were excited for and your thoughts on Anthem. Are you guys going to pre-order? Are you guys going to wait until after it comes out and see how it actually looks and is received by others? Make sure to like this video you guys enjoyed. Make sure to comment down below and subscribe if you like what we do here on the Geek XP. Make sure to hit that bell icon. I don't know if it's actually there. It might be there. It might be down there. I don't remember. Make sure to hit the bell icon so that you guys are notified every time we put up a new video. You guys have been awarded some Geek XP. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay geeky, my friends, and I'll see you at your next save. Metroid 4! Oh, shit! Oh!